a lot, and I think we all need that. And we all should forgive and not hold grudges. He told Peter how long, many times he should forgive his brother, seven times 70. He didn't literally mean 490 times. He, he just meant over and over again when a brother asks for forgiveness. We're so thankful for Brother Mays being here and the message that he will deliver to us this morning. I want to mention to you that he does have a few CDs in the back. He's pretty humble about it on the can. He says, just donate whatever you think I'm worth, what my work is worth. But uh, uh, he has all the songs that he will be teaching to us and, and uh, singing while he's here at our gospel meeting. This morning, if you will, turn to Ephesians 5, 19 through 21, and we'll read this together. <clears throat> speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. This morning I give to you from Brother, Brother Paul Mays, Thank you. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Super glad to be with you. Super grateful to be with you. So Brother Larry just threw me for a loop with that one. I mean, I was teary-eyed. I just, I just was. It was exciting and blessed and a, a joyful reunion. Didn't see it coming, and it was special. It was just special. I love the Lord. I love His church. I love the truth, the Bible. I love the lost, too. That's why I work. I want us all to be ready on that great day when He comes in the clouds, on that one day when He judges the whole world. I want us all to be ready. That's why I work. I want to go to heaven, and I want you to go to heaven. I love you, all of you. Thank you for the privilege to be here today. It is the Lord's Day, the first day of the week. We have come in His name, assembled to worship Him, to remember that death that He lived, that, that death that He endured, that life that He lived, the perfect life. He made the right choice every single time. That is a, a new way that I have, uh, I guess, accidentally over time developed to say that. He made the right choice every time. It makes me marvel that Jesus did that, and that's why I say that that way. He made the right choice every single time. I, I can't conceive of doing that. Can you? I mean, we know what we've done. We know the mistakes that we've made, the sins we've committed, transgressions against God's law. And to think that every time he was faced with the challenge, he made the right choice, it just puts me in awe of the Savior. That's why we're here, Jesus Christ. This morning we uh, studied about forgiveness. We considered the teaching of Jesus about being forgiving of one another. And, and this morning's message is tough. It is a very difficult sermon for me to deliver. Every time I've delivered it, I feel wrung out, just like a rag, wrung out, squeezed. And it takes a lot out of me. So bear with me on this. It is a hymn of repentance. It is earnest. It is introspective. It is examining oneself, and it is tough to deliver. We will sing it. I do have some special uh, thoughts about the song. Um, I, I say it's a hymn of repentance. I had sinned. Then I wrote this. I was feeling godly sorrow that was working towards repentance. And that's what makes it so personal and tough. Um, it has come to be one of the ones that people say is their favorite. My daughter, Chloe, she, she said that this is her favorite. Um, our pulpit minister, where I worship, do you know that I'm not a pulpit minister? I'm just Paul, just a Christian. Our pulpit minister, Neil Ritchie, actually led it. And this was the first time that I had been in assembly, in an assembly of the Lord's Church when one of my songs was led, and I was just uh, in the um, assembling rather than leading it. And that was extremely encouraging. It, it, it's just a completely, I don't know, a different animal. It's a, just a completely different experience for that to happen. So that is 
really encouraging with it. And then this week, I work all the time. I could not tell you all the different ways that I work. I will tell you one of the ways that I've been working lately is I broadcast in the Philippines every Monday. There is a school, I think it's a school of preaching. If it's not, it's a Christian school. And they broadcast every Monday. It's their night. It's my morning. And I get on with them and they, uh, there's three brothers. They're called Armakev together. It's uh, a combination of their names. Great singers. Um, they're students of the word. They are Christians. They're not part of a denomination. They're part of the Lord's church instead. Not part of a denomination. Instead, they're part of the Lord's church. They sing the songs and then they have been learning my songs and the other songs of the other Christians who I work with. I work with the Collaborators for Christ. Um, Shane Fisher, he is a lyricist and a music writer. He writes fabulous sermons and songs. As a matter of fact, I close my meetings with one that he wrote called Unlocked by Faith. Potent message, my favorite to deliver. Shane Fisher, he's uh, one of my number one co-laborers. Deb Hibbard is a lyricist, and she has written music for one song. I kind of coaxed it out of her. I knew she could do it. Coaxed it out of her. She's written, she is, you know, people say a firecracker. Four foot nothing, four foot ten, I think she is. Four foot ten. Wonderful servant. Wonderful firecracker. Fired up, bubbly positive. Writes incredibly encouraging lyrics. Um, she writes all the time. So Shane and Deb, and then also Mayume, May Zaporteza. She is uh, also a lyric. No, she's, she just writes music for Deb's lyrics. And then Hatton Allen is a Memphis School of Preaching graduate and pulpit minister. He's only 23 years old. And we are together. We are the Collaborators for Christ work all the time. And we put those songs uh, out, and they go around the world. It's incredibly encouraging. Just this week, I was sent a video of three young brethren. I, I, they looked 18, I don't know, in the Philippines singing this song that we're going to work on this morning, Father Forgive. Incredibly encouraging. I mean, I want my work to bless the church. I like doing this. I love doing this. And when it goes worldwide, even just, it's just so encouraging. I want to work. I just want to work. And I don't know what retirement is, and I don't want to know what it is. I want to work till I'm dead. And I don't want to preach until I'm dead. I want to preach long after that with these hymns. That's what I'm working for. That's a revelation. I think it's 14, 13 kind of thing. It starts with, right, blessed are the dead. Their good works follow them. They, they rest from their labors. Their good works follow them. That's one of the things I'm working for. I want to teach the doctrine of Christ long after I'm dead. And I want to do that with these teaching hymns. I'm so grateful that you are willing to learn these hymns with me. Y'all sang out with me this morning. Wonderfully encouraging. Thank you for your participation. Now, you taught me about forgiveness in that first message, that I need to be forgiving of my brethren. We all taught one another. That is the divine pattern. That is what God has decided that we will do. We are united in the doctrine of Christ. We speak the same thing. We speak where the Bible speaks. That will be one of our messages this week. Thank you for all of this. Thank you. It's a privilege. Father, forgive. A hymn of repentance. So we're going to be more noble, like those Berean Jews. We're going to take apart these lyrics by the authority of Scripture. We're going to compare what, what I've written here. I want you to test me. Try the spirits. I want, I want to be put to the test. And we do so together by comparing what we're going to teach here to the authority of the Word. That beautiful setting right there, that's right across the highway from my house. We're so blessed where we live. It's just gorgeous. I celebrate God's creation all the time. Uh, the glory of what he has done for us, the sky, those beautiful um, plants there that are on the fence. Beautiful area that I live in. Very blessed. And I love to celebrate it by taking pictures and sharing it, I like to talk about it. All right, some of my other work. That's the Gospel Broadcasting Network. Y'all familiar with GBN? Yeah, I got the privilege to go down there. I think it was about two and a half years ago. I went down and filmed my first 15 episodes of The Fruit of Our Lips. Those are my episodes on, on the Gospel Broadcasting Network. And then recently, this past, um, past summer, I went for another 
session and I knew what I was doing. I was kind of dialed in and I had the goal of recording 30 episodes in three days. That was my goal. On day two and a half, 2.5 days in, I had recorded 43 episodes. So every single episode was a different sermon and song. They're abbreviated. I go fast through it. Uh, I play the hymn, and then I teach the lesson that the hymns teach. But I came prepared. I knocked out 43 episodes. It is a privilege and a joy to work there with those firm, sound brethren at GBN, the Gospel Broadcasting Network. That's Tucker Wallace. He's a blessing. You know, he came out of religious error. He used to be part of what hurts Jesus. You know what hurts Jesus? Religious division. It hurts him. We can know this because he prayed for religious unity in John 17, 20 through 23. We're going to cover that in one of my upcoming messages. I think that's this evening. This afternoon's one o'clock message. It's called The Church of Christ is the Church of Christ. That is just exactly as potent as it is simple. The Church of Christ is the Church of Christ. We're going to cover that. Tucker came out of religious division. Now, and a lot of time I say in my messages, uh, there are no kinds of Christians. There's no hyphenated Christians is what I mean by that. There are no Catholic Christians or Baptist Christians or Protestant Christians or Wesleyan, Calvinist, Arminian, Pledge, none of that mess. One is either a Christian or they are not. Okay? But there is a kind of Christian that I do admire in a different way. That's those who are brave and honest enough to come out of religious error. When you realize you've been wrong, you have a choice to make. You can either obey Jesus or you can remain in that error. You can dig in your heels, remain in error, or you can be brave and honest. It hurts. But how long does that last? And then compare that to eternity. So brave honesty. I love that. I love Christians who used to be part of religious division. I admire you. All right. This is a uh, potent... Teaching meme, I make memes. I use my phone, I've been doing this, using my phone to make these little memes, and I post them on social media. I'm just sharing you with you some of my work. This is designed to generate Bible study. A real quick overview of this is we're together at here. You know, There's two different processes here, to become a Baptist or a Christian. It's two different processes. It's a different process to become a Baptist than it is to become a Christian, okay? So we're together at here, Hear the good news about Jesus. The gospel is the good news. It's defined for us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news. We believe that same good news. We're, we're together. At that point, it diverges. Uh, there are many different ways to become a Baptist at that point. Some of them even reject that repentance is part of the obedience to the gospel. I don't know how they get there. However, the way to become a Baptist, is, it, it varies, but... You might invite Jesus into your heart. You might accept Jesus as your personal Savior. You might pray a sinner's prayer. All of those are fables. They're fables because God calls them fables. 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 4, preach the word. That's what I do. Be instant, in season, and out of season. That means whether they want to hear it or not, whether it's fashionable or not. We preach the word and we're instant. We stick with the doctrine of Christ, whether folks want to hear it or not. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Reprove gentle correction, rebuke, firm correction, exhort, warning, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering, patience, kind, loving, patience, and doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You see that right there? That's not sound doctrine. No, it's a fable. They will be turned aside from the truth and turned instead to fables. That's what those folks believe, and we got to love them, okay? This is designed to generate Bible study. It works. I'm always engaged in Bible study. I hope y'all are too. Point folks to Jesus. Point folks to the one way of salvation and the one pre-denominational. Pre. Before. Denominational. Religious division. Before all religious division. we got to point people to Jesus and the one way of salvation that he offers in his one church. It's not a denomination. That's what this is designed to do. So the way of salvation, we'll cover it. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. That's the extremely abbreviated version. We're going to cover that in every message. The one way of salvation that Jesus offers. Back to the Bible. That's what you want to use, okay? If you don't know about Back to the Bible, please get a hold of it. Um, I can tell you how to get a hold of it. It is simple Bible Q&A. 
fill in the blank answers. You give a question. Um, your word is blank. Truth. Your word is truth. So it'll give the book, chapter, verse, designation. You give the question. They fill it out. They read it. There's a, there's a process to this, and it works. I've got a live Bible study going right now with an honest truth seeker. He's learned some things that he didn't know, and he's older than me. Sometimes that, that can be a, a hindrance, you know? I guess I had enough gray in my beard that he was willing to go with it in my hair. I, he was willing to, to take my word for some things and actually listen to me. And he learned some things, and he went with it, and he is growing and growing, and we're almost done with book three. It's been a wonderful study. He's a blessing to me. His name's Mike, and I love him. There's the rig. Well, that thing's a conversation starter. And then I say, and I'm taking it to preach. Oh. Talk about the one way of salvation in the one church of the Bible. Everything you got is a tool. Everything you got is a tool. Everything that you have is a tool for the Lord if you look at it right. Everything. All right, one of my videos where I'm traveling, I just put up the phone and I start talking about Jesus. And I give Bible studies while I'm driving. All right, this one is written by Shane. I just wanted to give you some insight. I just gave you just a glimpse of some of the work I do. I don't stop. My wife will tell you I don't stop. My brain doesn't shut off and I don't stop. I got one speed, wide open. Meditate. This, oh, this is pretty cool. You see uh, the time signature up there, 4-8? Yeah, what's the book chapter verse on this meditate scripture? Philippians 4 verse 8. What a neat thing. So Shane Fisher wrote this one, all of it. I, I wrote the uh, the harmonies. I wrote that's called arranging. This song is super fun, encouraging, enjoyable. I love uh, the fun songs. I do. We're gonna sing this, and then we're gonna get into the, the lesson of the hour. And I don't have to teach anything about this. Let's just do it. Meditate, meditate, meditate on these things. Meditate, meditate. Meditate on these things. Meditate on things that are true. Meditate on things that are noble. Meditate on things that are just. Meditate on things that we know are pure. Meditate, meditate, meditate on these things. Meditate, meditate, meditate on these things. Meditate on things that are good. Meditate on things that are lovely. Meditate on things virtuous. Meditate on things that are praiseworthy. Meditate, meditate, meditate on these things. Meditate, meditate, meditate on these things. Pretty simple. Jane Fisher. I would normally share this picture, but I've got them with me, my family. When they walked in last night, I was like, yes. And it put a different, um, I don't know. It was much better. I'm glad my family's with me. All right, now it's time to switch gears. This is difficult. Um, Father Forgive is, is the hymn. I do what I do not wish to do. The, the one scripture that really sums this up is Romans 7.19. This is the overall teaching of this hymn. I just want to read that before we sing it. Then we're going to take apart the lyrics together. We're going to be more noble. Romans 7.19, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Spirit wars against the flesh, doesn't it? You know what's what's right and what you need to do, but it's hard, you know? You do the wrong thing, then you repent. And that's the teaching of the hymn. <clears throat> the hymn does have uh, louder and quieter parts in the chorus. I think it'll make sense to you. I do what I do not wish to do, Father, forgive, Father, forgive. I do what I know I should not do, Father, forgive your child. I want to do right.
hymn of repentance. I had sinned. We all do that. When we do, it's time to get back up. That's what we need to do. We need to repent. We need to change our mind as evidenced by a change of our behavior. That's what we need to do. I do what I do not wish to do. Romans 7.15, the first scripture. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Do you hate sin? We should. We should hate the sin that separates us from God, that hurts God. We should hate what God hates, sin. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. 1 John 1, 9, if, there's that big two-letter word again, if, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you sin, confess to God. Make every effort to never commit that sin again. Work hard. Fear God. Love Him. Fear God and keep His commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. I do what I know I should not do. For the good that I would, I do not. Romans seven nineteen. But the evil which I would not, that I do. That's just the reality. We're in the flesh. We're tempted. We're going to stumble. I want to do right, right in your sight. I want to hear welcome home. Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. I want to do right. If you want to do right, study. Put the word in your heart so you can know what the right answer is. The Bible contains every answer to every spiritual question. Study. Hide it in your heart so you will know the right choice to make. Father, forgive your child. Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. I want to do right, right in your sight. I want to hear welcome home. John 14, 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions, many houses, many rooms. Rather, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That's, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear, enter into that. That's where I want to go. That's where I want you to go. That's why I'm here. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. That's where I want to be. 
That's where I want you to be. Keep walking in the light. Keep confessing. Keep repenting. Keep trying. Stumble, get back up. Stumble again, get back up. Don't ever give up, church. I want to do right, right in your sight. I want to hear welcome home. I'll walk in the light as he's in the light. I bet you recognize that scripture, don't you? Yeah, that's 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Walking in the light results in continual cleansing of sin. Walking in the light involves stumbling. What? Yeah, because we're going to stumble. Walking in the light involves repenting, stumbling, and getting back up. Confessing. Keep trying, church. Keep trying hard. Please bless me lest I roam. Psalm 109, 26. Help me, O Lord, my God. O save me according to thy mercy. I stumble along and do what's wrong. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's Matthew 26, 41. I stumble along. I do. I'm trying, but I stumble. It's part of walking in the light. Just keep getting back up. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. Colossians 3.13, forbearing one another. This is in the last hymn. Forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Father, forgive. And sometimes the world will see that wrong. This one hurts. This hurts. Bringing reproach upon the Lord's church. This one hurts. Sometimes the world will see that wrong. I submit Romans 2, 21 through 24. Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. That is humbling. The world sees us. They know we claim Christ, that we are trying to be disciples. When they see us publicly, it should cause us to repent. That's what it should do. Get up. Keep trying, church. Father, forgive your child. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Baptized believers have that privilege of the remission of sins, the forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the blood, and it's granted to those who obey the gospel. Father, forgive your child. I want to do right right in your sight. I want to hear welcome home. I walk in the light as he's in the light. John 8, 12, then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If we are following Jesus, we won't be walking in darkness. And if we're walking in darkness, we are not following Jesus. Repent, church. Stumble, get back up. It's walking in the light. Keep going. Please help me. Please bless me, lest I roam. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Is there a more encouraging passage? Because I don't know. There hath no temptation. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. God is faithful. He will not, he's not going to allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. He will not allow you to be tempted. Did you know that? Did you know that he's on your side? Every temptation, he's made an escape. He's made a way that you can overcome this. That's a promise from God. We can do this. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make a way of escape. Merciful God, that you may be able to bear it. What a wonderful, comforting promise. That means I know. Huh, I'm faced with a temptation. Where's that escape? Let me find it. Let me get away from this. Keep looking for that. That's part of walking in the light. Please bless me lest I roam. I try but I fail from time to time. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. 
Romans 7, 23 and 24, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? We have freedom in Christ. We're talking about that perfect law of liberty this morning. It's freedom in Christ. We're free from law of sin and death. We're free, free from the chains that bind us when we live for Christ. It's freedom. Life in Christ, I can tell you what, I've lived on both sides. I was equally as artistic and um, outgoing on both sides, the Christian life and before, my old man of sin. Chains of sin, they bind you. But life in Christ is freedom, beautiful freedom. Living in harmony with His Word is so much better than living against Him. All of my creative outlets way more enjoyable now that they're in line with what he has designed for my life. Living for Christ, there's no better life. There's no better life than the life lived for Christ. I try but I fail from time to time. You know that's the opposite of living in open, unrepentant sin, right? Yeah, those Corinthians, some of them were practicing sin. We got a list, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10 is a list of of sins, when we practice those sins, that's the way it's worded in some of the translations. Don't kid yourself. The ones who live in these sins will not inherit the kingdom. They had been that way, but they were washed. They repented. They changed. It's practicing sin without the intent to overcome rather than hating sin. Practicing sin, not going to inherit the kingdom. Fighting against the sin and stumbling sometimes, that's walking in the light. Confess, walk in the light. Stumble, get up. Confess, repent, try. God knows when you're trying. He knows. That's walking in the light. Please bless me lest I roam. Try, but I fail from time to time. Father, forgive. I fail though he's with me all the time. <laughs> Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he hath said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 15, 13, 5. I fail, though he's with me all the time. He's with you. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to overcome temptation, and he's provided the tools for you to do so. Get up. Keep trying. Father, forgive your child. I want to do right right in your sight. I want to hear welcome home because straight is the gate, Matthew 7, 14, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. I want to hear welcome home. I want to be on the straight and narrow. I want to enter in. I want to sing to God forever with you. I want to praise God with you forever. So keep the faith, keep walking in the light, repent, stumble, get up, keep trying. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14, 15. I want to do right, right in your sight. If we do, that's loving God. Doing right, making the right choice. That's loving God. That's loving Jesus. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John 14, 15. I'll walk in the light as he's in the light. John 9, 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Please bless me lest I roam. Psalm 119, 134, deliver me from the oppression of man so I will keep thy precepts. I do what I know I should not do. Father, forgive your child. Romans 7, 19, again, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So that's part of this human condition. We're in the flesh. We are. We're going to be tempted and we're going to stumble. So get up. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Run the race with confidence, remembering that God has made a way of escape for those temptations. He wants you to win. He wants you to overcome those temptations. We've covered the teaching of it. We've covered the scriptures. It's time to sing it again. And you're going to teach me right now. To walk in the light to keep the faith. We're going to repent together with this, and we're going to ask God to forgive us together. We're going to teach each other right now. <clears throat>
I do what I do not wish to do. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. I do what I know I should not do. Father, forgive your child. I want to do right. Right in your sight. I want to hear well. Come home. I'll walk in the light as he's in the light. Please bless me less I roam. I stumble along and do what's wrong. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. And sometimes the world will see that wrong. Father, child. I want to do right, right in your sight. I want to hear well. Come home. I'll walk in the light as he's in the light. Please bless me less. I roam. I try, but I fail from time to time. Father, forgive. Father, forgive. I fail, though he's with me all the time. Father, forgive your child. I want to do right, right in your sight. I want to hear well. Come home. I'll walk in the light as he's in the light. Please bless me less I roam I do what I know I should not do Father forgive your child Amen church <clears throat> It is difficult to deliver Thank you for teaching me to repent right now. You just did that, okay? That's the nature of songs. That's the nature of the Lord's church. That is what God intends for us to do with these hymns, is to teach one another psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Thank you for helping me with that. Repentance is part of obedience to the gospel. There is one way of salvation in the one church of the Bible. The denominations just don't teach it. That's why they are denominations. The Lord's church teaches His terms for salvation. And I'm going to repeat that same gospel offer for salvation that it was extended 2,000 years ago by the authority of Jesus Christ. That's why it was extended the first time. That's why it's still extended today. That's part of being the one church of the Bible. Jesus was, is perfect. He got in that same kind of flesh vessel that we are in now, he made the right choice every single time. That's why his blood is perfect. That's why it can forgive you of your sins if you will meet his terms for benefiting from that perfect blood. We've got to do what he said. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Hebrews 5, 9. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to everyone. Titus 2, 11. But that way is narrow, and most people aren't on it. It means we've got to do something. And that's what the people asked in Acts chapter 2. 
when he told them about the Savior, how he lived a perfect life, and he was killed on a Roman cross, was buried in a tomb and raised three days later. They knew that they had killed the Son of God because he told them, we did, we killed Jesus because of our sin. What must we do? Acts 2.37 Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21 They didn't know how to call on the name of the Lord. He hadn't told them yet. Y'all killed Jesus. Acts 2.36 What do we do about that? Acts 2.37 The answer is the same today. It's the same. It always will be until the Lord returns in the clouds. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of, by the authority of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. That's why we do this. That's why I did it. That's why I encourage everyone to do it who has not yet done it. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This offer for salvation is good for you and everyone who follows, Acts 2.39. So save yourselves, Acts 2.40. The ones that gladly received his word did so by being baptized. Acts 2.41, what was the result? They were added to the church. That day, 3,000 people, church grew. 3,000 people obeyed the gospel by submitting to repentance and baptism by the authority of Jesus Christ because he said so. The result was the remission of sins being added to the one pre-denominational before all religious division. Church, that belongs to, that is of Christ. We wear his name. He bought us. We better. My name's on the deed to the house because I bought it. Jesus' name is on his church. This is part of why we are the church of Christ. He bought us. We don't wear man-made names. Those folks obeyed the gospel that day. It was Jesus himself who put them in the church. You too can be put into the church by Jesus Christ himself right now if you haven't. Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord Jesus Christ added to the church daily those who were being saved. The ones who did what he said for the reason he said. Not the ones who were sprinkled, not the ones who were immersed as an outward display of an inward change. Those are fables. Instead, the ones who went into the water because Jesus said so, so they could be forgiven of their sins by the blood of Jesus Christ, the only suitable sacrifice. Jesus is king. He's coming back for his kingdom. Jesus is the groom coming back for his bride. Jesus is the head. We are the body. We who have obeyed the gospel. I hope I've encouraged you to repent, to walk in the light, to keep fighting the good fight of faith. We're going to have to do that to hear well done on that great and terrible day. It's going to be great for those who have remained faithful until death, Revelation 2.10. It's going to be a scary day for those who haven't, and that's why we work, church. Do you love those people around you? Do you? Do you love them enough to tell them the truth, to tell them the hard truth about the one way of salvation in the one church of the Bible? Maybe that's something you might need to repent of. Maybe. But we are the church. Confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So that's what we do, right? We pray. For each other, we confess, hey, I'm, I'm weak here. I stumbled. I need your prayers for this. That's what we do. So if you need to obey the gospel, do exactly what they did for the exact reason that they did, the remission of sins, now is the time. Now is the time. If you need to repent, get back up. If it's private, make it known in, to God in your own mind. If it's public, make it known now. If you just want prayers, that's what the Lord's church does. We lift each other up. We pray for each other and encourage each other. If you have any kind of need, please make it known now while we stand and we sing. When we walk with the Lord in the light.